Where the Cat and Wolf Play. I love this quest so much, and it's a pleasure, really, to revisit it this time around for a video. It took me a ridiculous amount of time to come to a decision on what Gaten's fate should be, and in this video, I want to share all of the evidence that I could find about the whole situation, including the things that cannot really be proven, but are heavily hinted at. At the end, I'll also share what my own personal decision was and explain why I came to that conclusion. Here's how the quest all starts. Geralt picks up a monster contract at the Horatan's notice board, a contract called the Beast of Honorton. It describes the presence of a dangerous beast or devil causing a lot of trouble near the village of Honorton. The people who wrote all of that also guarantee a sizable reward and ask any interested person to come pay them a visit for more information. So far so good, right? Unfortunately, when Geralt finally makes it near the small village, there are apparent signs of a massacre. It's way too quiet and Geralt can see a bunch of Al Ghouls feasting on what looks like a dead body. Geralt quickly realizes that there are also many more bodies around. After slaying the necrophages, a new quest begins called Where the Cat and Wolf Play. It's then time to investigate what could have led to the disaster. After inspecting some of the bodies, it becomes obvious that the wounds on the villagers come from a blade. While checking the barn, Geralt picks up a scent of ingredients he knows very well. Ingredients used in potions. He then realizes that the massacre is no ordinary peasant's doing. While some of the victims were killed instantly with wounds such as a blow to the heart, Geralt also comes across the body of a girl where the blade of the killer appeared to have only severed her spinal cord, leading to a very painful and very slow death. Upon further inspection, it is also obvious that the events here are all pretty fresh and recent as there is still a fireplace running strong. Up to this point in the quest, it looks as though there are no survivors at all, but Geralt finally comes across a little girl who had been spared. When she finally decides to describe the events, what I assume Geralt suspected is finally confirmed. It was the doing of another witcher, one from the school of the cat. The little girl goes on to describe the events. The witcher came back with the monster's head, but her uncle was apparently unhappy about something. They then proceeded to go to the barn, which is where the story becomes too hard to tell for the little girl, but Geralt understands it was the beginning of the massacre. After getting some information on where the cat witcher might be, Geralt manages to find his tracks. The witcher is bleeding and apparently very near. After following the tracks and murdering some wolves, Geralt finally finds the wounded witcher. His name, Gaten. As a quick side note, there is also a line that he can say if Geralt is wearing cat armor, which is, well, well, what have we here? Feline armor, wolf's head medallion, a crossbreed, and I thought it was funny, so I just had to mention it. Anyways, covered in blood, the Witcher proceeds to explain his version of the story, which I have to admit, I think is mostly, if not entirely true. I think everything lines up with the evidence that we found back at the village. Gaten explains that the villagers had agreed to pay a significant sum for the head of the beast. When it was finally time to pay though, they refused. They only wanted to give 12 crowns, which is pretty much unacceptable. Their excuse was, well, we are poor, no money, can't feed the young ones because of the war, etc. Please show some pity. But Gaten wouldn't. He wanted the money no matter what. Which is somewhat understandable. I mean, that's what they agreed to. The Elderman decided to give the Witcher gold he supposedly had hidden in his barn. This is where this story turned into a massacre. The two villagers in the barn with the Witcher tried to kill him. While one spoke with Gaten, the other jabbed him in the back with a pitchfork, wounding the Witcher pretty badly. It didn't pierce any vital organs though, and I think it's fair to say the Witcher could probably survive his injury. The Witcher then lost his temper, he murdered the two villagers in the barn, which is understandable and totally deserved if you ask me. Unfortunately, he didn't stop there. He got out of the barn and murdered every single villager except for the little girl. The little girl that I talked about earlier. That pretty much sums up everything that happened and now we can start thinking about what Geralt should do in this situation and look at all the evidence. For this section, I will include things that we can find after Geralt makes his decision, so that's important to keep in mind because while making the decision, there are some informations that the player still doesn't know. The first thing that I really want to talk about is that Gaten acknowledges the fact that he lost his temper pretty bad and that his actions were definitely wrong. It's also known that witchers can become easily irritable and emotionally unstable after consuming a potion. It's hard to tell in this case if the potion smell in the barn was a result of the pitchfork hitting the potion and dropping some on the floor, or if it was a result of him consuming a potion, if he did consume one though. 
it does not excuse anything, but any Witcher would be at the very least more likely to lose their temper in the way that Gaten did if they had consumed the potion. Gaten's life was also a mess based on the information that we can find. Geralt makes his way to the stash of Gaten after the quest, where he can then find a letter that was sent to Gaten. Apparently, their school has been taken by soldiers and some of the Witchers there were murdered. The letter also explains that there are bounties on the head of both Gaten and the writer of the letter, Joel. We also find out earlier that his sister died about 10 years ago from old age, which, by the way, is the reason why he actually spared the little girl. She reminded him of her. Anyway, it's pretty hard to find anything that's going well in Gaten's life, which might further explain his actions, but also might make him more likely to do something similar again in the future. After talking with him though, I didn't feel like he had lost his will to live or that he was straight up a dangerous man solely because of the state of his life. At his hideout, we can also find three other monster trophies that were never turned in for some reason. Geralt said that it might be because other villagers might have tried to cheat him before, but it's also possible that he just ended up murdering the contract givers in other villages as well. I guess we'll never know the actual story behind the trophies. Now, about the villagers of Honorton, they definitely lied about their financial situation. When Geralt inspected the village, it was clear and obvious that they were doing pretty well for themselves, especially for a small village in Velen. You could even say that it was not normal, which might be a hint at the fact that they might have tricked other people before, maybe merchants for example, just like they did with Gaten. Maybe the barn trick is something that they are very used to. And as far as I can tell though, there is no evidence of the other villagers being aware of what was going on or that they ever participated in any way. Now, what do I personally think is the right thing to do here? I think that despite all of the reasons and evidence that might explain why Gaten lost it, it does not excuse his actions at all. Geralt also could have lost it many times in the past and also happens to drink potions, and he never even came close to doing such a massacre, not even in Blaviken or any other events. Sure, he killed a lot of people, many times, but it was always justified in some way. I strongly believe that as a human, Gaten should die. What he did is unacceptable and deserves strong punishment. He also tarnished the name of the Witchers even more, which is obviously not great. Showing remorse for his actions and him currently having a rough time through life is simply not enough to excuse the murdering of an entire village, even if it's a small one. But, as a Witcher, he is part of a trade that is slowly dying with lower and lower numbers of Witchers across the continent and, while in the books it is clear that the number of monsters is clearly lower than in the games, with the reality of what we see in the games, I think it's fair to say that even if he goes crazy like one contract out of five, he is probably still saving more people than he is hurting. A monster can absolutely destroy villages and kill multiple people, and letting Gaten live might stop that more often than not. That's if he does not turn into the monster too often. But, to me, being a Witcher, if he saves more people than he hurts, which I think he does, in the brutal reality of the world of the Witcher, he should live. Might be the wrong decision, because obviously, we do not know Gaten very well, and he could be even worse than we think. But based on the evidence that we have for this quest, I do believe that it is the right decision. I can totally understand why it's such a difficult choice to make and why a lot of people prefer killing him. It feels like it's morally the right thing to do. He deserves it, but he is also a witcher. There are no perfect endings here, just the one we think is not the worst. Thank you all so much for making it to the end, and again, I want to thank everyone for the support on my last videos. It's all very appreciated. If you enjoyed this one, please consider liking the video, and for newcomers, if you're interested in new Witcher content every week, you might want to subscribe. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon in a new video. Bye bye.